From the Evening Standard in London, I'm David Marlson, and this is The Leader. It's nice to see you all. Thank you for coming. Sorry about the rain. Nothing I can do about that. As Sajid Javid left his house in the morning for his first day as the new health secretary, the task of explaining what happened to Matt Hancock over the weekend was left to his colleague, Robert Buckland. Would you have fired him, Mr Buckland? Well, I think the Prime Minister, like the rest of us, heard about the story and Matt Hancock was gone the day after. I don't think that when you look back at this, you'll say that that was uh, anything other than a swift uh, uh, resignation. That was on the LBC radio station on TV, over on BBC Breakfast. It got even more awkward for the Justice Secretary. So if it is found that, that Matt Hancock has broken the ministerial code on this issue, what should happen? Well, um, again, I can't speculate as to precisely the circumstances of this uh, matter. Um, uh, obviously, he's now resigned. Uh, I'm not sure about the precise consequences with regard to, to that. There are many, many questions being raised about Matt Hancock and Boris Johnson in the wake of the former Health Secretary's resignation over his affair with an aide. The Evening Standard's political editor Joe Murphy is here. And Joe, one of those questions has to be, why wasn't he fired? I'm sure a lot of people will suspect that this Prime Minister has too many skeletons in his own cupboard to start firing ministers who get involved in romantic or embarrassing situations with their staff. But interestingly, it does seem that the Prime Minister is regretting his decision in the sense that he has almost suggested today that he encouraged Hancock to resign. So in the in a visit to Batley and Spen today, the Prime Minister said, well, I read the story on Friday and we've got a new health secretary in post on Saturday and that's the right pace to proceed. Implication there that the Prime Minister didn't make a mistake but he saw which way things were going on Friday but just didn't want to rush it and you know let the health secretary come to his own conclusion that would be inevitable that I have to say is at variance to what we saw and heard on Friday when the Prime Minister's official spokesman said to us in the lobby that the matter was quotes closed close quotes and the PM had simply accepted Matt Hancock's apology and had full confidence in him and then of course the next day the Prime Minister wrote in reply to Matt Hancock's resignation that he was sorry to see him go and uh, in the Sunday papers a source close to the Prime Minister um, had briefed that Mr Johnson accepted the resignation, quotes, reluctantly, close quotes. So I think the conclusion people are going to draw is that the Prime Minister made the wrong judgment and now regrets it. Do we have a government that can't uphold standards? Well, that, I think, is a debate that is being taken very seriously by MPs and by commentators, because we've had... A procession of cabinet ministers getting into trouble over recent months. We had Priti Patel um, criticised by an inquiry into whether she bullied officials. We had Robert Jenrick found to have behaved unlawfully. We had Matt Hancock found to have behaved unlawfully in regard to contracts. And now we have a situation where Matt Hancock leaves behind him a whole load of questions, not just about his relationship with his advisor but about his use of private email addresses. He appears to have been using a Gmail account to be in contact with people. We don't know why or what was said. There's this strange coincidence that at least three companies that are linked to him or to his family or to his assistant um, have secured contracts with the public sector. I'm not saying that he has been in any way involved in the contract setting themselves. But on the other hand, has he had discussions or did he give any ad informal advice to people like his pub landlord who went on to secure quite lucrative deals with the NHS? All these questions have piled up and one of the things people say of Boris Johnson is he, he, he doesn't have a good track record of upholding watchdogs. In fact, some people would say he's marginalised watchdogs. And uh, you heard this morning a, a rather tortuous interview with the Justice Secretary, who was left arguing that the government is very popular and it's people who are upset by its popularity seem to be raising these issues. Really, popularity 
isn't the issue. The issue is standards in public life. And in the past, prime ministers have been seen to set the gold standard of probity. Some were very good at this. And the current prime minister is facing an increasing charge that he isn't really setting down the rules. He isn't really keeping standards high enough. I'm remembering all of those chants of the but her emails from the US presidential elections and Hillary Clinton, Joe. I mean, does it really matter if the health secretary uses a private email account? It does matter because there are actually rules on this and ministers are supposed to use departmental emails. Now, as um, Mr Buckland, the Justice Secretary, said today, sometimes the, you might only have a device with your Gmail on it, and so that's perfectly fair. But what you have to ensure is that your officials can see everything that you've said and done that relates to departmental business, because that's their job, is to keep records, to chase progress, and to ensure probity. Um, so if officials have complained at not having access, which is an allegation that the Sunday Times floated this weekend, then that is a serious lapse in the rules. And moving away from the alleged sleaze that we've been talking about, Joe, are there questions being asked about security? Because this is a health secretary being filmed on CCTV in his own office and that footage somehow being leaked to a national newspaper. I'd imagine there's a few people a bit concerned about that. There's a huge series of questions about this. Yes, it's a security issue because one assumes that leaks from a cabinet minister's office are not possible in normal times. I mean, the CCTV footage from a minister's own office of a minister, you would think would only be seen by senior officials whose job is security. Now, it's quite possible, but we don't know the answers because they are blanking questions and using, as usual, the internal inquiry as cover. It is quite possible that this sort of task has been delegated to perhaps privately outsourced companies. And it may be that there is some junior or even temporary worker who has privy access to such videos. That's if it was the official feed, which it appears to be. I asked Jeremy Hunt, did, did, was he aware of a camera in the office when he was Secretary of State for Health before Mr Hancock? No, he was very surprised at its existence, he said. There is a photograph of um, Mr Hancock's office, old office, showing a, what appears to be a large camera in the ceiling. So it's really quite hard to um, understand how he wasn't aware of it and or was it installed recently? Other ministers say they know nothing about such cameras being in their offices and they have put in requests to their officials on Friday night. Please tell us what's going on in our departments. And one final question, although there are, of course, many, many more that could be asked, Jill. Why has Sajid Java been brought back as Health Secretary now? His uh, career as Chancellor was... Somewhat cut short, wasn't it? Sajid Javid is a heavyweight. He's a guy who's experienced, he's run five departments, and he was on the comeback trail as soon as Dominic Cummings had left the building. You might remember in February last year we had the reshuffle where Javid resigned because he was told that he had to share his special advisors with Downing Street and, in fact, basically allow number 10 to wade into the Treasury's concerns and, and wear the trousers in that relationship. And he quit. Dominic Cummings is still saying that was a, a good thing to have done. Most Tory MPs think it was the waste of a talented minister and a pointless row. And a few of them would say, actually, one of the consequences has been number 10 pushing up spending over the past year. Even a new royal yacht for £200 million is now apparently uh, seriously in contention and that the Treasury's independence needs to be upheld. But the other big reason for Sajid Javid to come back is that he was on the back benches, he could be appointed with no need of a wider reshuffle or any follow-on consequences. And the Prime Minister, who we hear is desperately keen to put off decisions on a reshuffle until after the summer, having previously planned to have it this summer. Well, 
Boris doesn't really seem to be a good butcher, to use Margaret Thatcher's phrase, and he's put it off. There's lots more on this story in the Evening Standard newspaper and online at standard.co.uk. That's the leader podcast. Join us again tomorrow at 4pm. It's easier if you hit the follow button.